Um, well, it was open until 1984. It was very popular, became the third most popular tourist attraction in North Wales. Uh, had everything on it, cinema, bars, restaurants, um, a zoo, had wrestling, all sorts. It was really popular, yeah. I wish I'd have come myself, but I didn't. Yeah, um, 1979, it was August 1979. Um, John Rowley and a load of market traders brought the ship from Barrow in Furness. Um, it was towed by tug and they had quite an adventure bringing it in because it had to wait for high tide, the highest tide to be able to bring her in. And there was a storm at the time and they were sat out in the estuary waiting for the, the opportunity that they could come in. Um, all sorts of things happened. The insurance company pulled out but it, it was a case of it was too dangerous to turn back. Um, Dallas is the Duke of Lancaster Appreciation Society on Facebook. It's a group of enthusiasts for the ship. Uh, I think we've got 1,500 members now. Um, yeah, I went after I found, came down that day, I went back home and started Googling the ship to find out a bit, of, a bit about her. And I found the Appreciation Society and joined it. And that's where I've, I've discovered a lot of the history and, and other things, you know, other places. <laughs> There's been quite a lot of issues with the council. Um, when it first arrived, there was 12 months discussion John Rowley had with the council and who were all in favour of the venture and were so excited that she was coming here. And then the day she arrived, they seemed to change their tune. And from then on in, they just attacked it with whatever they could. And when I say attacked, they certainly did attack. It's as if the ship doesn't exist. It's been here since 1979. Um, from planning permission refusal um, to bar licences, they even sabotaged a grant for landscaping. Um, anything that they did, the council tried to scupper it. They have funding which they're willing to give to other people for projects, but we seem to get overlooked every single time. So who knows why? But, you know, it, it did open eventually. Um, and as I say, it was, it was really popular. And then they carried on with the attack, so much so that John Rowley decided to close the business and you know, concentrate on other ventures elsewhere, but always vowed to come back because they were so sick of being attacked. Yeah. There's been a lot of missed opportunities. Um, but yet again, um, so many obstacles in the way uh, due to red tape over weight limits on bridges, which are non-existent anyway, but are still there for some reason. So there's been a lot of missed opportunities. The bridge, which is over there to the, to the back of the ship, of the Cobb Road is the, the only road that you can come with emergency services because the railway underpass is very low. Um, now, in 1979, the, the council refused planning permission on the basis that it could only take 10 ton in weight. But in those days, they found an alternative route 
by just a bit further down, it put extra response time to the time that the fire engines could get here. But plan permission was eventually granted and they opened. But that's, that access is gone now. So that's why the ship's been shut for nigh on 40 years because the emergency services couldn't get here. Doing a lot of research and various discussions with certain bodies, we discovered and proved that the bridge isn't a weak bridge. It can actually carry 40 ton. And it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm Cal. I'm Craig. And we run a company called North Wales Concerts based here in North Wales. I think, I mean, just look around. It's a massive ship just like stuck in the middle of North Wales. It, that alone makes it unique, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you look at the sort of the different areas you could have sectioned off for a music festival. It's like for a little small music festival, it's perfect, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we keep going back to funding. If the funding was there, the area would thrive. The local community would thrive. The local businesses would thrive. We'd get a lot more tourists into this area. I think just by allowing, allowing it to be whatever the owners want it to be now, you know. Can you imagine what she would have done if she was allowed to be what they intended all those years ago? You know, there was jobs, it was so popular. It's, it's a crying shame really, but it happens and we just got to move on. With the right investment, the big opportunity for all kinds of sailing clubs to be involved here different activities. This is an ideal place for a hover link from here over to the Wirral, make it easy access into Liverpool, cuts the journey time in half. You know, we've had events on the dock and stuff. They've been successful and we hope there should be many more. And any revenue gain can go back and ploughed into maybe getting the ship restored and reopened once again as the fun ship. Um, in the past year, we've had a food festival here. Um, also, we've had a Christmas market. Next year, we're looking to put on some concerts, uh, 3,000 ticket concerts. Um, people have inquired about weddings. Everyone we've shown pictures to just understands it straight away. You know, they just immediately yeah. see that, they see the potential here that can be done, you know. Fun days, so on, wrestling. Yeah, we had two event trials. Um, September last year and December, yes, they went very well. Um, so now uh, we're just looking forward to booking more events in and carrying on, trying to get some more tourism into the area. Uh, Hope's names to see the place thrive, to see the place get redeveloped, to see thousands of people here enjoying themselves, taking in the views. The views are spectacular. The best views along this coast. Nobody else has these views. So yeah, big hopes. Just that, just that, that she does get reopened, you know, because she's the last steam turbine passenger ship in existence. The history in itself is, is well worth saving. It'd be a shame to lose it, you know, really well. If she, if she ever goes from here, it'll be such a sad day, you know.